Law professor Tae Soon Hang, the accused as well as the defendant of the ongoing sex for grades case, cross-examined his former student Jareen Ko for the first time on day three of the trial. When questioned by Tae, Ms. Ko revealed that she was pressured into agreeing with CPIB in her statement after CPIB Deputy Director Ting Ki Fat told her that she could also be charged for corruption. She said, Mr. Ting said, it was not possible for a girl to buy a guy a gift. He told me that I wasn't cooperating because the evidence I gave them was not making out the elements of the charge against Prof T. He then told me that corruption is a two-sided offence and he could very well decide to charge me instead. However, if I cooperated with him, he would ask the prosecution to grant me an indemnity if the need arose. I further said that I could not cooperate within his definition of cooperation because my statements would not hold up to cross-examination. Then he said, it's possible for him to ask the prosecution to solely use my statement without calling me to testify. And if I cooperate, I will be able to carry on my life and begin my career upon graduation. When asked whether she had given in to Mr. Ting's demand when she gave her statements, she said she had given in to some. Ms. Ko said he initially wanted me to write that I wanted favour from Ting. I told them I refused to write that because I did not require any favour from any professor. She also refused to write that she had sex with Tay because she needed favour from him. But in relation to the four gifts, Tay Ki Fat suggested that if she doesn't want to say that she wants Tay to grant her favour in return for her gifts, she could say that she doesn't want Tay to impose any disfavour. She rejected the suggestion. She said Mr. Ting then suggested the phrase undue prejudice, that she gave Tay the gifts so that she would not be unduly prejudiced if she were to take his modules in the future. And Ms. Ko obliged. She said, in her mind, not showing undue prejudice means not treating her unfairly. So she was more comfortable with that compromise, even though it was still not an accurate depiction of the true state of affairs. Ms. Ko said, for close to 12 hours during her stay at the CPIB building, she was locked up from the outside in a room. She was given food but was not allowed to sleep even though she had slept only three and a half hours in the last 30 hours. And no statements were recorded until she had a two and a half hour conversation with Mr. Ting Ki Fat. Ms. Ko had her first statement corrected at 2.30 a.m. on April 3, 2012 before she was released. On May 4, 2012, however, she requested to amend her earlier statements. This time, she said... The reason she bought gifts for Tay was, I wanted him to like me more than just a normal student because I had a crush on him. And the reason her earlier statements were recorded differently was because she felt pressured as she was under the impression that she needed indemnity from the court. Ms. Ko was supposed to be a key prosecution witness, but the prosecution has applied to impeach her, pointing out several discrepancies between her court testimony and CPIB statements. DPP also pointed out that in her CPIB statements, Ms. Ko had said the main reasons for her buying gifts or paying for his bills were that she wanted to be in his good books, which implied a corrupt nature of their relationship. But Ms. Ko said wanting to be in his good books to her means she wanted him to like her. Stay with us on Razor TV for more updates on the Sex for Grace corruption trial.